Hello everybody! Adjusting a vintage style fender truss rod located at the body end of the neck is a skill that every player owning such instrument should master. And yet a lot of people are for some reason scared to do it by themselves. Today I will show you how to adjust a vintage style fender truss rod and I can assure you after watching this video taking your time following these instructions, you will learn how to do it. And if you were scared of doing it before, you won't be anymore. My name is Juha Rokangas and this is the episode 7 of my Zen and the Art of Guitar Maintenance tutorials. Let's get to it. Before we start, a few words of when should you consider adjusting the truss rod. So let's assume your guitar has been okay to play. No issues whatsoever, comfortable action, no fret buzz, but one day you notice that something's wrong. Fret buzz all over the place, or alternatively, the guitar feels difficult to play. The strings are higher from the frets than they were. In other words, the action of the guitar is higher than it used to be. So when you notice any of these symptoms, that is when in 99% of the cases, the truss rod adjustment is the right thing to do. Not the saddles of the bridge. They have not moved anywhere if you haven't touched them. So never start from the saddles if your guitar was okay and now isn't. Always examine the truss rod first. Let me also explain you the terms tightening and loosening the truss rod. In a guitar, the strings, they pull the neck with a pretty strong force typically strong enough to bow the neck slightly upwards. You know, the whole point of having a truss rod inside the neck is to act as a counterforce to the strings. In other words, the strings pull the neck up and with the truss rod we can force it back down. This is not the whole truth. A modern two-way truss rod can do more than that, but with a vintage Fender style truss rod, this info will get us far. So, right. Let me now teach you how to determine whether this guitar truss rod needs adjusting and if it does, should I tighten it? Should I loosen it? Soon you'll know. Right, so here we have the tools. Here's the string winder. And uh, I have a Phillips screwdriver. Notice Phillips 2 head, not Phillips 1, not Phillips 3, not a posi drive, a Phillips 2 head or standard fender bolts, uh, or you can have um, power tools as well, but be careful with them. Um, also, here's a flathead screwdriver to adjust the truss rod, a big one, an old one, or you could use this tool, which is even better. I just didn't have it at hand right now, but yeah, a, a good size um, flathead screwdriver will do. There's a tuner as well and a capo, you will soon understand why. So let's go. First, I'll check on the, the action a little bit and already I noticed that it's, it's higher than I'd like it to be. So we'll start by sighting the neck. See what I'm doing here. I'm pressing the low E string from the first fret, from the last fret to the, to the fretboard and I'm checking from the middle See here again, pressing from the last fret, first fret, and checking the gap between the frets and the string. Here we go. Look at that carefully. So this is too much. This is like nearly one millimeter gap between. Here's an alternative way which frees your uh, your, your left hand, so you can use the capo at the first fret, and then you just press the last fret to the fretboard and check the check the relief, meaning the curve of the neck. Right, so then we found out that the truss rod is too loose because the relief was too much, so we're loosening the strings. This is the way it has to be done with with the vintage style truss rods, with the adjustments at the body end of the neck. Um, right, and here's another reason why I use the capo. So I 
just keep the strings set there so they don't move anywhere. So I'll continue with the with the power tool here to loosen the bolts. So you notice with my in my case with my right hand since I'm left-handed, so I'm holding the body and the neck together so they don't come apart when the when the when the bolts are loose. And then I keep it all together and lay it flat on the bench like so. And then I will raise the neck from its pocket carefully. I don't need to remove the whole neck. Some guitars would have a hex key. So always use the right key for your guitar. And here in this photograph, just for demonstrational purpose, what does it mean to tighten? What does it mean to loosen? So tightening means turning the nut clockwise. Loosening means counterclockwise. Okay, here in this photo, it's taken of a guitar with a with the trussle adjustments in the other end, but it doesn't make a difference. Um, the point is that when I'm looking at the nut like that, that's when I'm tightening clockwise, loosening counterclockwise. And when we're looking at it from the other end, it's the same thing. Heads up, a little addition from the editing board. One reason why many avoid adjusting the truss rod is the fear of breaking it. Well, is there such a risk? Well, yes, if you keep tightening it like crazy. So when tightening, always progress with little steps and check the relief. You feel the nut getting pretty hard to turn at some point. And if the neck still seems to have too much relief and you don't know your guitar well enough, time to take it to a pro. And remember when you take the time to learn to adjust the truss rod and repeatedly do it to your favorite guitars again and again over the years, you will learn to know your instrument better and better. You'll learn to know that in this guitar, it's enough to loosen a quarter turn in the summer when it's more humid, loosen the same amount in the dry season and so on. And now another big risk is that you're using wrong tools and you end up damaging the adjusting knot. So always use the right tools. Also, if the knot seems stuck, you can't get it moving, stop and take the guitar to a pro. Last but not least, always approach adjusting your guitar in calm mood, focus to understand the task you're doing. You know, if you're all wired up and anxious about it, stop. Don't continue turning the nut in panic mode. Not good. Continue another time or take the guitar to a pro. Right, so what I'm doing here, I'm tightening. See, I'm turning clockwise, like so. And I am here turning quite much. I assume it might be too much. You'll understand why, but I turned it quite a bit now for demonstrational purposes. So carefully putting it all together again. So I'm holding the bolts, holding the neck and the body together, getting it up so I can tighten the screws again. Okay, this might feel clumsy to you that it's so much work to, to adjust a truss rod of such a guitar, but you just have to live with it. I mean, there's no way around it. So you just need to do it enough times so, so you'll start feel comfortable. So as you notice, I didn't tighten it all the way with a power tool. I moved on to the, to the traditional um, screwdriver and tightening it. So, and you don't need to tighten them like super, super tight, you know, so that you break places with it enough to just tighten it with it like snugly like so so we'll tune up the strings to pitch in order to check the relief of the neck it's always important to tune the guitar to pitch to get the right tension for the neck right so here i am checking it again pressing from the last fret pressing from the first fret checking with my thumb from the middle the curve of the fretboard or you can use the capo as earlier so now pay attention. This amount is too little. The string is nearly resting flat on the frets. So that's that's not enough relief. So this is going to cause uh, trouble when playing open chords. And let's say typically from the first to 
fifth to seventh fret there will be a lot of fret buzz if the neck is set this straight so it needs a little bit more relief so what's the solution let's loosen the strings again that's right there's no shortcuts with this type of truss rods there is also some guitars like music man guitars or others that have the adjustment at the body end of the neck but you can access the adjustment without removing the neck and lifting it off its pocket and in such cases it is not necessary to to loosen the strings at all you can just leave them to pitch and adjust the truss rod from between the strings that's that's perfectly safe but we're going to cover that type of truss rod adjustment in another video anyways so this one is now dedicated for the for the vintage fender style neck so look counterclockwise i'm loosening that much so now from the starting point we're maybe about half half a turn maybe a bit less quarter to half a turn tighter than the starting point so we'll go back tighten the bolts and again don't tighten them with the with the power tool too much just better to rely on the old school screwdriver like that all right now we have them snugly tightened And again, tuning the guitar up to pitch. Right, and again, sighting the neck, checking the relief, just like the previous times. And here I show another tool. I didn't show this in the beginning, but this is a feeler gauge. So with, the, with different thickness gauges there, this is not something we use r routinely when when doing this adjustment but it's a good way to learn so let me show you here this is a pretty good relief right there and when i'm checking it with a feeler gauge maybe it doesn't come so clear but i'm trying it with different thickness gauges here This one is too thick it moves the string up like that but the, the other one so we hit it right where i want it to be 0 0.2 millimeters so that's about i would say the type of um, um relief it di di differs a little bit from a guitar to another in one guitar 0.25 to even 0.3 millimeter relief might work better in some guitar 0.115 could be just fine especially with super low action if that's what you desire yeah 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.3 maximum that's probably where you should head and it's it 0 0.2 millimeters equals um two standard copy paper sheets about so it's not very much curve not very much relief but enough what i'm doing here is and i'm just checking that the neck aligns straight with the strings this guitar has pretty tight neck pocket the neck aligned correctly by just tightening it there but oftentimes with fender guitars with bolt-on guitars with loose neck pocket after retightening the bolts you might notice that the strings don't sit you know in the middle of the fretboard so you might have less space on the plain string side or vice versa on the wound string side and then what you need to do is just loosen the neck bolts a tiny bit turn the neck straight tighten the neck bolts again okay. that's the recipe that's what you can do this one is okay right checking the the action now and i got it pretty much where i wanted it to be not super low but not uncomfortably high and all the notes play nicely and no fret buzz when bending up there 
high E string on the 12th, 15th, 17th. That's no place really like it should. A healthy feeling sounding neck. All right, now we have the truss rod set into a good position. Summarizing, so if your guitar was good a while back, but changed bad on its own without you meddling with any adjustments, then now after adjusting the truss rod, it should be good again without touching the bridge height or other settings. If, however, after getting the truss rod right, you still feel you might want to tweak the action a bit, now is the time to adjust the bridge saddle height. Check the intonation and so on. Or if it seems the truss rod doesn't do what it's supposed to do, say you've loosened it all the way and the neck is still completely straight or even back bolt the wrong way, then it's time to take the guitar to a pro repair shop. And one more time, remember always first make sure the truss rod is adjusted well and only after that look into the other adjusting possibilities, which we will look into as well in the future episodes of Zen and the Art of Guitar Maintenance. Thanks for watching. Remember that like button and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and hit that bell icon as well to be notified. Peace, love and good music. <laughs>